Hey, it's Mark Pedosa Get The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest, I'm very excited to talk to, <laughs> but I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him, you love him, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great, how are you? I'm really excited to talk to one of our own, a, a, yeah, a I mean, fellow land investor. That's <laughs> right. It's always nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So Jill DeWitt from LandAcademy.com yes. is our guest. <laughs> I bet you a lot of people who are listening already know about Jill and Steve, Land Academy, but this is the first time we've had you on the podcast. So welcome. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. So Jill, let's just rewind the tape okay. and let's just talk about your land investing journey. Like, how did you even get into it? Well, oddly enough, uh, probably similar to the way you found the, the niche. So uh, I, you know, learned about real estate growing up in Orange County. My dad was an investor, so I watched him do it mostly with houses, but I just grew up knowing that, you know, here, especially in Southern California, there's money to be made in real estate. And I didn't really know the land part. So I was one of my first jobs. I worked for some land developers actually in Santa Ana. They would buy the dirt. They would build strip malls or office buildings and they would lease them out. And I'm so I like, oh, okay, I got a taste of this. So then fast forward, I didn't do anything with it. Unfortunately, I wish I would have back then. Right. So fast forward, you know, gosh, going on 12 years ago, bumped into uh, Stephen Butala and he was happily doing this and pulled me out of what I was doing and showed me the way. And it was just a perfect fit. You know, I'm, I, he's the data person. I'm the talk on the phone person. So we made a fantastic team and here we are. I don't, can't even count how many thousands of transactions we've done. And it now is, you know, like you, it's just, it's on a, uh, autopilot and going fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a deal junkie. Yes. So, yeah. So Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? <laughs> you know, it, it really is. It really is crazy when you, um, when you think about it, one that a lot of people struggle to even understand, like, wait a minute, you buy land, right? You don't put anything on it. And then yep. you turn around and you sell it. And like you've done thousands of deals in, in like six years, I've done, uh, yeah, six years, I've done like over 2000 deals. I mean, it's, it's like, how do you even count anymore? But like when, when you're going through this, what, what do you say to people that say like, well, you got to do more than just flip dirt. Like how do you help people get our, their brain wrapped around the fact that all we really do, I, I even struggle like Jill, I'm telling you, I struggle when people say like, what do you do? And I'm like, I, I like you wouldn't understand it. It's too simple. Like, and isn't that funny, that? Scott? We do that with houses too. I mean, we um, take houses. You, the three of us know, it's 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 how you buy it. You immediately buy it. It's worth something. I don't really have to do anything to it, but make it pretty and get it out there. You know, in front of the right person kind of thing. And it's, it's so true. It's, it's funny. We, you know, we laugh about it. You know, you're, you're out somewhere at a dinner party and people ask you what you do. And I'm like, Oh boy, here we go. Cause it's so hard to explain. They, they just don't, uh, some, some, some see it obviously, or we wouldn't be here, but some people don't. And I just say, okay, that's fine. We'll be quietly over here doing just great. I mean, it's funny, Mark, the other day, the other day I I'm out on a, I want to say it was a I want to say it was a Thursday. I could be wrong. I was, I'm out. I'm out in the middle of the week, and where am I? I'm at the golf course, right? Like I, I'm playing golf. Some guy catches up to me, and I'm like, I was playing by, you know, like alone. I'm like, you want to join me? He's like, yeah, no problem. And we start talking, and he's like, hey, like, shouldn't you be at work right now? I mean, like it's the middle of the day, and I'm like, well. I kind of am at work. And he's like, well, what, what do you mean? Like you work on the golf course? And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I'm like, my, my business is running without me. And like, I don't like it. I, this is my work. Like I'm a passive income bum. And 
he's like, what do you do? And I, and I explained to him what we did. And then he goes, I go, wait a minute, shouldn't you be at work? And he goes, <laughs> I actually should be at work. And I said, well, what do you do? And he was, funny enough, he was the real estate manager for a big burger company, big one. And his job was to, to after they bought the raw land, to go through the zoning and get it to the point where they could get the permits. He was the entitlement uh, VP or whatever. And I'm like, how often do you get to play golf? He's like, oh, like once a month. And I'm like, your job sucks. You're right. Yeah. It's all the stuff we don't want to do. I, I don't want to do that stuff. I'm, I'm very happy in my role knowing that, you know, when we sell it to the next person, he's still going to make money off it. You know, and that's, that's, we all know that's how you get buyers for life. I'm going to mark it up this much. You go, you go to it. And whether it's land or houses, that's why we get people going, all right, I need 10 more of those. I'm like, no kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so what is your focus now? Is it more land? Is it more houses? Is it 50, 50? So, and, and, and why, like why houses and, and not just land? No, um, it's still more land than houses, but in today's environment with the days on number getting shorter and shorter, you and, and the stellar data that we have for houses it's, it's hard not to. So, you know, we all know you, we can all put in a zip code and zero in on an area and know that, wow, every three, four bedroom house in this radius sells in 12 days, as long as it's priced like X. Well, then why wouldn't you go do that? That's, so that's still what, what we do. But with land, we all know too, it's just, it's so much easier to hit bigger numbers. With houses, it's, we kind of, it's kind of like a Stephen phrase too. It's like houses are singles all day long. Uh, and that's a no brainers. But when you have land, you know, I can double and triple my money, especially in today's environment. So we're doing numbers with land where I'll buy them for $50,000 and sell them for 150. You know, I've got one right now and um, just north of here, uh, in a county really close to me, but it's not Los Angeles County, where we're buying it for under $500,000. It's under contract for 1.5. So you, you know, that's why land is still great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's amazing that those deals are still there because the market is so inefficient. It's amazing. I have, I'm sure you guys are feeling this too. You know, especially with, with uh, everything going on in our world right now, we don't have to be in the big city. We can get out here. We can go to, you know, these Zoom towns and, you know, live a couple hours away and gosh, now have that ranch we've always dreamed about. And so land is flying off the shelves. It's, it's a great, great thing. Yeah, yeah. So now what about the housing model? So how does that work? Same thing. You know what, Mark, is a great question. It's all the same stuff. It's just, you know, and it's, that's where, that's where Steven shines. He is my, he knows how to pick them. He knows how to price them. He knows how to make my phone ring and it's never changed from whether on the buy side or the sell side. So right now my phone is just blowing up. Now I thank goodness I have a team now, which is really great, but our phones are blowing up with, with all kinds of property types. And we're just, you know, and now it's so much volume, I can really just pick the best ones. But so back to your question, Mark, about houses, it's kind of the, it's kind of the same thing. You just really get in there, you know, and you know, he's, he's nuts about that. He gets in there and really focuses and prices well. And so when, when the offers come back and someone says, yeah, I do want to sell, thank you. I'm so happy to get your offer. Wow, this makes sense. I don't have to remodel the kitchen and you guys have the cash and let's do it. I'm like, yep. So we just, we just move in and, and do it. Scott Todd. I mean, one of the things that Joe's talking about is a lot, a lot about what we talk about as well too, Mark. It's, it's really about buying a, a building, a machine, not to, not buying a machine, building a machine, right? Like whether it's land buying or, you know, like houses, uh, whatever. Okay. Like it doesn't really matter what you're doing. 
ultimately you need you need to have the deal flow coming in on the front side right, right. so you got jill said this she's got to get her phone ringing so if steven gets her phone ring okay so he gets her phone ring all right so you, you're building the land buying machine house buying machine whatever it is you buy it but then you got to have the process right like to me it's just an assembly line i just think of this whole thing as an assembly line it moves from here to here and ultimately at the end we finish with the with our finished product which is a sale right because we want to sell that asset and unlike other types of businesses like real estate where it's buy and hold our end goal is to sell it a lot faster than like uh, the buy and hold guys, right? Like we want to sell it and get it going. That's our finished product. The buy and hold guys, they want to, they want to add that asset or that trophy to their shelf. Boom. I got this shelf over here of all my assets. And then they want to look at them. They want to look at them. And yeah, they produce income that way through, you know, rents, et cetera. We also have the ability of producing income the way that we sell it. But I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people miss is, you want to build a machine, get the phone ringing. Mm -hmm. It all starts with good quality data. That's it. And so that's been our, our uh, big focus right now. We have two things that, that I, I wasn't going to share, but I'll share. Like we're getting even more strategic and focused on our data and how we use our data. So it really takes all the guesswork out of it. And then the other thing I was going to, I was, debating and sharing, but we're doing mobiles. I tell you, that's a, a huge uh, focus for us right now. So it's kind of like, it's, you know, more land, but there's something on the land. So we're uh, working on stuff with that too. We might even come up with our own little um, program all centered around that at some point. Yeah, I mean, mobile homes, I think are, are, are great. And it's very similar uh, to, to the land niche. And for a lot of people who want to do multifamily, I, I always tell them like, the land investing niche is a good gateway drug right. to go into multifamily. And the next one up would be mobile home parks mm -hmm. because you can just rent the dirt if you don't want to deal with the actual mobile home. Right. Which, you know, I personally, I, I can't even change a light bulb. I don't want to deal with any homes. I can deal with anything physical. Exactly. I mean, I just want to, you know, shuffle paper and make money. That's Isn't it. it funny? So many, it's, I love it when I get people that come to us from other things, like so many other property types, you just, t you just hit it right. Perfect. Mark. They're so hard, you know, and we've been there, done that, you know, we've done renovations. I've done that stuff. I'm like, and when I sat there and, you know, added up how many days I sat in that house and I came home with dirt in my hair. Cause you have to micromanage the project. And I went, wow, how much more money I could have made sitting at my stupid desk with this behind me, you know, <laughs> and, and not have to go through all that. So, um, and it's, so it's fun when I meet people that come from like commercial real estate and all kinds of things. And the, and I almost have to, you know, like you do too, you have to kind of undo their, their thought process and, and remind them it is this easy. There's a buyer, there's a seller. All right, how do you want to close? What do you want to do with it? You get to make all the shots. You make all the decisions, call all the shots. You know, it's so awesome. And it's funny because so many people, they're like, okay, they come into this thinking and they have big plans. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to grow my empire, do this. And then and at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that say, you know what? This land thing's so flipping easy. I'm just going to stay in the land space, you know, and just do bigger and better deals. And that's kind of, for me personally, that's my favorite thing. So the, like the mobile part of it, it's really more Steven. The house part of it is really more Steven. Like I'm, I'm here and happy to help, but my number one end of the day thing that I love to do the best is just plain land. Just buy it, sell it for more for cash, double my money, you know, knowing it's worth more. And then I, I move on and I go play on the beach. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad life. Exactly. Not a bad life. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I'm just thinking, like, I, I like what you said. Go, do you work every morning and then go lay on the beach, right? Totally. Like, and it's funny because uh, that's kind of what I tell my wife is, uh, morning time, I'm going to dedicate a little bit of time to do what I got to do. And then the rest of the day is all mine. Like, whatever I want to do, I'm going to go do it. Exactly. So what's some of the worst advice you see or hear given in 
land investing or even house investing? Let's see. Um, gosh, the worst advice is probably that you have to do something to the property. A lot of people go in thinking that they're going to maximize profit by rezoning or improving it somehow. And instead of just taking a step back and realize as long as you bought it right, that's all you had to do. So I see a lot of people going down that, that rabbit hole and trying to, you know, learn all these things they don't need to learn. You don't need to be a, a, a perk expert or, you know, you know, basically, you know, spend a week at the county and understand how they do things. It, it does, it's not going to, it's not going to make a difference. Just learn to do the deals and, and get it. Like, like you said, you know, Scott, if you, once you have a real good thing that you understand and you like it, um, and, and, and we all know, um, niches often find you. So I'm a huge fan of if it comes easy to you and you're really good at it, it's probably meant to be, don't mess with it. So if you are really good at that, like some people are really good at undoing title messes, you know, and, and they may be the only person in that area doing that. Well, great. You have no competition, including me, because I don't, I don't like that. I'm just happy with doing, finding really good deals, big deals. I'm, I'm happy working in, in areas and dollar amounts that uh, make people cringe and they, they don't sleep well at night, but I know exactly what I'm doing and I know how well I bought it because my data guy hooked me up. So <laughs> um, it, it works out. It's great. No, that, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so let's talk about these bigger deals, half yeah. million dollar, million dollar, $5 million deals, mm -hmm. because we all know banks don't want to loan Correct. on raw land unless you you're going to get a construction loan. So yeah, then there's, it's about, you know, finding the capital. There's a few out there. There's like, um, there's some companies, but this is a really good point. This is something that we have personally gone into and, and we have a, a lot of people in our community that do the same thing. I'm now being the bank for a lot of people because we firmly believe no good deal should go to waste. And it doesn't matter if you're part of Land Academy or not, uh, you can bring me a deal. I don't care what it is, if, you know, and I'll look at it. If it's that good, yeah, I will. I'll give you the money. We're going to figure this out because we all know what's, what's going to happen. Kind of thing. And, that's, and that's never changed. You know, it's regardless of the size of the deal, if it's that good of a deal and you get it from the right person, there's no problem with the money. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Scott would agree like in real estate, we make our money on the buy yeah. and you should never lose a deal because of capital. You don't have the money. You'll find it. Oh yeah. If you show the, you show an investor the numbers, the, you yeah. know, it'll come to you. Scott Tyler. I love it. Advice. I mean, I, I, I agree, man. Like, you know, essentially, um, you know, one, one of the things I think you asked, you asked a couple questions. I wanted to chime in on one of them. You said, what's the bad advice, right? And I, I like what she said. I will tell you that like one of the things that I think a lot of people, since I'm talking about land, a lot of people go down the rabbit hole with is um, when it comes to advice is I think that a lot of people, they like, uh, they sometimes uh, I'm trying to find the right words here because I don't want to like insult somebody, but at the same time, what they do is they will chase after somebody that yeah. like doesn't know what they're even talking about, right? Like, okay, so like, hey, I'm new to this business. I've done like, I don't know, X number of deals and I know what I got to do now. Okay, great. That's yeah. fantastic. But why not listen to people that have done it thousands and thousands of times? Jill and, and Steve, thousands of times, tens, I don't, know, I don't know, it doesn't matter, right? Like, how do you stop counting? It's really the years, okay? Like, it's not just one deal or one year. You can have a flash, uh, a fresh, flashy way of doing something. It doesn't change the cores of the business. And I like what you said, the, the niche f finds you, right? So, like, I think that you have to go down that, that niche and, and really explore what, where it is that you want to go. But, mm -hmm. man there's so much opportunity in this business. There's so much opportunity and big, big deal, small deal. Like literally we, everybody can, can do something with land and still not touch the market it's and true. affect it because it's a big country. There's a, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, I don't know how long you've been doing it, Jill. I've been doing it. I've seen a lot of land investors yeah. come and go. And the reality is, is that my business continues to grow every year. It's like, you know, you got to believe. You got to believe. And that's probably the hardest part for a lot of people is just taking that first step of belief. It's true. And then going. Yep. Yeah. So Jill, how do you handle people that have scarcity mentality that come to you? Like, it looks like, you know, all these people are buying land or houses in these counties. You know, there's not going to be any deals for me. It looks like, you know, you guys are buying it all or, you know, Isn't this that... group's buying it all. How are we going to buy anything? Well, we, well, that's one of the things I'm sure you enter that a lot too. I'm like, you know what? That's one of the, dis that's one of the conversations that we had together like before we all share this whole thing let's make sure we're not you know is there enough land to go around and the answer is oh my gosh heck yes and and we know people and i'm sure you do too that have made whole careers in one county you know because yeah. once you find an area that you know and you understand and and you get to know the people kind of thing you know, before you know it, you're buying all the five acres and then you're buying all the 10 acres and you could do all the 20 acres and the 40 and it's endless. It's, you know, especially where I'm sitting right now in Los Angeles County. If I really wanted to, I could retire off of doing homes and never leave LA County, period. There's enough here. And I don't, I wouldn't be the only one too. There could be a lot of us doing the same thing. So there's just, there's just so much out there. Yeah, so the due diligence, though, on land, like we don't even go look at the land anymore. Correct. Because we can do everything virtually. Yeah. Um, if we really had to go look at it, we could have somebody, you know, like a, like a gig on Craigslist for 50 bucks, take pictures, right. fill out our prop report, take videos, do all that. How do you do it with houses? I imagine, is it similar or do you have a, do you actually physically go look at it? Very good question. We, uh, we have a program where we developed, it's called Boots on the Ground. So we have people that we know and trusted and have done deals with in the past. And they're kind of our eyes and ears on the ground. So they'll go, and it's really not a lot of conversations anyway. It's really just a, um, a one-time meeting with a seller, you know, getting that signed purchase agreement, maybe answering any last questions that they have, you know, getting eyes on the property real quick, taking initial pictures. And at that same time, they're scheduling an inspection and a, a formal inspection, which of course we pay for. So uh, they, they, and then once I have all that data, you know, back everything else, I kind of take it from there and they're just there just in case again, to hold a seller's hand once in a while, you know, for move day or whatever. And if I need anything like, Hey, you know, if they have to turn on, they will help maybe turn on some utilities or things like that. But even my team here can do things like that. Um, during the sale process. If I need a sign in the yard, you know, they can do that. But it's, that's how we handle it. Nice, nice. And then as far as, you know, growing and managing a big team, how, how do you do that? Is there, do you use software? Do you have daily meetings, weekly meetings? Do you have, you know, training videos? Like how, how do you approach it? I'll tell you, Mark, that is the one part of this whole business. I would love to hear you, your, t your opinions on this, but finding the right people is sometimes the hardest part of this business. And it takes, it can take years to find the right team and, and groom them. But once you do, man, you're set. So we, we are there now. And the last addition to our team was my personal transaction coordinator. And I sent her flowers last week because I so appreciate how hard she works. And I know her phone is nuts. And what she juggles deal-wise for me is insane. So that's the thing. So we have different teams. It depends on the level of what they're doing. Of course, we'll have people that they do real routine tasks. And we're real fans on on making a video, sharing it to them, and they could just go in and plug in numbers or whatever we need to do with the routine tasks, like, you know, calling a county, checking what the tax situation is on a thousand properties or something. I don't know. That's that's easy. But then the other ones, you know, like my transaction coordinator, actually she came with experience. There's 
I have all levels. She was, she's a former title agent and actually still does stuff, helps her friends out on the side because we all know every title agent on the planet right now, if they're any good, they're, they're swamped. So she actually moonlights and does deals for her friends, which is hilarious. So I, I love it. So she's always got her a foot in the door, you know, and has a, has connections for me too, which is great. So. Nice. Nice. <laughs> no, scaling is hard. And, yeah. um, it, it's, it's just one of those things that you just, you know, building those systems, building those processes. So the human being isn't as important. They're very important, but you got to have that system and process down so that they can just come in and ramp up. And then you get lucky and you find somebody that's, you know, puts emotional labor into it and they go above and beyond that process and system. And that's when, you know, the magic happens. Exactly. Well, Joe, this has been fantastic, but we're now at that point in the podcast where we're going to ask you for one more gem of information, a okay. tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Neighborscoop.com. I don't know how I got by without it. Check out neighborscoop.com. You just put in the, the state, county, APN. I mean, it's your, it's, it's, uh, it's one stop way to do all your due diligence when you're looking at a property. And it's, it's a tool that we actually created. And I, again, I don't know how we got by without it. <laughs> all right, neighborscoop.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott Todd, before we get to your tip of the week, we got a shout out to our sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start going up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times as your Sherpa. And by the way, the tuition isn't going to cost you anything. We guarantee you're going to make back that money in cash or terms deals, 180 days or less. Get on a call, learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Well, you know, uh, I'm a fan of, of uh, landing pages. I know you are. Landing pages are really good. You know, you can do different things with them. You can stand them up quickly. Uh, you, you know, like lead pages is probably the, the best known landing page place out there. Uh, the complaint about lead pages is that they're kind of pricey. But check out swipepages.com. Right? Swipe, so swipe pages. pages. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool alternative to lead pages and um, you can build a landing page quickly just further proof you don't need a website for your land business stand up a, a lead page or a landing page for every uh, property that you have quick and easy someone wants the information on a property send them here again you don't have to have a website so a lot of times that stops people from moving forward oh i gotta get my logo first or i gotta get a landing page no you don't this, uh, I'm sorry, a, a website or logo. You don't need that stuff. You can just use a landing page like this and it's super simple. I don't know, man. This is scaring me. Oh, no, it isn't. Okay. I was a little worried about the pricing. Cause like, you know, you see all these great software like, oh, start for free. And then they have no monetization and they go out of business in six months. Yeah, no, they, no, they're, this, making they, they're, they're making money. This, is, this money. isn't so bad. 29 bucks a month for unlimited conversions, one domain, 20,000 uh, unique visitors a month, yeah. unlimited landing pages. It's not bad. Swipe pages. Okay. That's, I mean, lead pages is what, 79 bucks a month? Yeah. Nine bucks a month? Yep. There you go. Finally, a little, little competition for uh, lead pages. Well, my tip of the week is, you know, look, every pain point in the land investing business, I think can be solved at landacademy.com. If we just go to their site and check out the tools, you've got countywise.com, dealfunding, deedperfect.com, houseacademy, neighborscoop.com, which Joe just talked about, offers to owners.com, parcelfact.com. They've got consulting. So every pain point can be solved. Go to landacademy.com. I've been doing this a long time now in teaching. It's a very simple philosophy. We want to rid the world of solo economic dependency. And Land Academy is doing a phenomenal job helping people transform their lives in land investing, uh, 
a house flipping, whatever it is. But once your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, you're free. And it's why go through the, the trial and error and take advantage of somebody's collective knowledge and wisdom. They've been doing it 20 years. Jill's been doing it 12 years. Learn more, go there. And uh, Jill, thank you so much for coming on. Are we thank good? You. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark and Scott. That was awesome. I'm really happy I got to catch up with you guys. It's good. Yeah, it's good to see you. It's good to see thank you. you. Uh, Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. Well, look, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality guests like a Jill DeWitt from landacademy.com is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money three days or less. All right. Are we ready to do this? We are. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Jill's like, I don't know. They were going to end up there. <laughs> that was like, awesome. <laughs> that could have been, it's like I could have been on the, on the beach right now. I like, know <laughs> that was awesome. Kind of like that. All that right. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joe.